Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Stories from Winga Summer Women More Stories, and today we're talking about tomorrow. It's such a captivating story. Just make use of the chance of the time you have now to break the world, because now is the time to spread the good news. Tomorrow, as soon as he got into the lawyer's office. He sensed that there was something wrong. He couldn't place his finger on it. His spirit was just heavily disturbed. He exchanged pleasantries with the man. It was the first time they were meeting. As a customer service slash marketing officer of a, ba of a bank, one of his duties was to meet bank clients and manage their accounts. The man's account manager had suddenly died under mysterious circumstances. His supervisor gave him the account a week after the previous account manager was buried. Life must go on. He got to the lawyer's office by 10 a.m. the day after he got the account. He had called ahead and booked an appointment. A giant bookshelf welcomed him into the lawyer's office. The lawyer didn't bother with nice days. The lawyer told him to sit down while he finished reading the article he was reading in the newspaper. He sat there patiently. Try not to glance at his watch, lest he gave the man the impression that he was in a hurry. The lawyer had millions saved in their bank and is regarded as a very important client. He noticed that the man was curiously checking him out, looking at him and summoning him up while pretending to read. He knew he wasn't looking bad at all. If the man would find any fault with him, it would have to do with him opening his mouth. But he was sure he would also impress with his words. He had been brought up to speed on the client's accounts and idiosyncrasies. The man suddenly closed his newspaper and said, I'm coming. The man stood up, walked briskly to a door beside his long bookshelf and disappeared into a room. A few minutes later, he started feeling very uncomfortable. He couldn't explain it. The sudden surge of power inside of him as a professional banker who had been in customer relations for five years he knew how he ought to conduct himself around such a client one wrong word could lead to the termination of his employment he tried very much to hold the surge he couldn't he started muttering in tongues under his breath it helped him ease the pressure a little he wondered what was wrong why he felt like combusting in a client's office. He kept looking at the door, expecting the client to emerge from his inner room at any moment. The man didn't seem in a hurry to return. He got on his feet. His legs were shaking. He started praying in tongues. He was careful not to talk, not to talk and make any noise. A kumbaya here, a kabaya there, and a akatabaya with some other words, kept the spiritual juice flowing. Suddenly, the lawyer walked out of the inner office. Lawyer, what did you call your name again? Hey, so and so, sir. Lawyer, how come I couldn't get any reading on you? Hey, sir. Lawyer, young man, don't sell me. Are you an initiate? Hey, I don't understand, sir. Lawyer, let me see your left hand. He handed over his left hand to the lawyer. Lawyer looked. Lawyer dropped the hand. Lawyer, sit down. He sat down. Lawyer, I became an initiate like you at the age of 30. I was told at that time that nobody can make it in the law profession unless he or she belonged. I waited for one of my senior land colleagues to take interest in me and show me the way. None of them did. So I went in search of help by myself. I became an initiate, but I have never had much peace. See, my room over there, that is where my destiny is. On the bed, on the bed there I sleep with ladies who come to me looking for help. I must never ask for sex. I have a handkerchief I must use to clean myself after sleeping with them. I have a mirror I use to check young men who come into my office. I use it to read their star and send it to work on my behalf. The only people the mirror cannot see are initiates like me. I can also read palms and when I check yours, 
when I checked yours earlier, I realized you are an initiate. So what is your story? How did you come to belong? He looked at the lawyer intently. He could see that the lawyer was serious. He shook his head. Lawyer, don't worry, you can talk to me. Initiate to initiate. He, he wanted to talk, but he didn't know what to say. Sir, lawyer, see, the man that blended me into the court died about five years ago. I have tried to do the best I can to keep the rituals going, but everything I was doing was so that I would not have to deal with any repercussion. I have remained single for this purpose. I was told every seven years, someone close to me would die as a sacrifice for the champs to remain, to remain potent. I made sure I never get close to people, but someone still dies. I have terrible nightmares every day. Sometimes. I'll fight all the way from my dreams to consciousness. I have seen many spiritualists, many prophets and herbalists. I want out. I want to be free of these demons. Nobody helped me. They took my money, made promises and abandoned me. I continue to target ladies and entice them with money so I can give the demons what they demanded. I make sure I hold interviews every three days in this office so that I can get young men to this office. What is the point of making money when you cannot spend it in peace? The only pleasure I have in life is food. I cannot sleep peacefully and I must spend my days looking for victims for the sacrifice. I really need help. I'll pay you. You can name your price. I need to meet your old person. Perhaps I can get some direction. Hey, okay, sir. Can I bring him here tomorrow? Liar. That will be fine. As soon as he left the lawyer's office, he started calling the brother in jeans and t-shirts. He wanted to seek his opinion on what to do. He wanted to know if they can both pay lawyer a visit and witness to him about Jesus. He wanted to share his testimony about the potency of the power of the Holy Spirit. He called and called. The phone kept ringing out. Later that evening, the brother in jeans and t-shirt called him back. They talked. The brother in jeans and t-shirt told him he should take he should have the brother jeans and t-shirt told him he should have told the lawyer about jesus right there and then your spirit was roaring to go why didn't you take advantage of that why didn't you lead him to christ get him filled with the holy spirit and burn all the champs in his office you should have done that right away delay is dangerous he didn't know what to say he thought of it but he was there as a banker and it wasn't professional to do evangelism on duty beyond that he was scared he was sitting in the office of a self-confessed diabolic and occultic man his first instinct was to leave the lawyer's office with his pride intact they agreed they would pay lawyer a visit the next day by 4 pm he called the lawyer and informed him the lawyer was happy that night he couldn't sleep he kept tossing and turning and praying he was so sure something was afoot. The next morning, his supervisor called him when he got to the office. The office had been informed of lawyer's death. Boy had died overnight of a strange illness. He just stood there and stared at his supervisor. Words just filled him. P.S. There is no better time to share the gospel than now. We wonder how many people came about demonic possession and affliction. The story above is a, is a classic example. Jumping from bed to bed in the name of sexual liberality has consequences. Condom cannot stop demons and sorcery. If you're trapped in a lifestyle and you want to change, don't pretend you don't know where to go or what to do. Call upon the name of Jesus wherever you are. Tomorrow is always too late. The end. Tomorrow is always too late. Make that you turn now and give your life to Christ.